Hello everyone, welcome back to another Sabbath video. So if you haven't already caught the first one, I would highly encourage you to go back and at least watch the intro of that one because I kind of give the basic explanation of like what these eight Sabbaths are, what the wheel of the year is. Um, and if you've already watched that, I'm just gonna give a brief overview of what it is right now. So the eight Sabbaths are something that Wiccan people, not even all Wiccan people celebrate. You do not have to be Wiccan um, or of any of that type of religion to basically celebrate it. Um, I am not necessarily of that religion, but I wanted to go out and basically just see what each of these little holidays were about, if there was anything about them that I could like turn into a family tradition and kind of like make it a yearly thing. And so there are eight Sabbaths total. Four of them are lesser, four of them are greater. The lesser Sabbaths are all kind of on the summer, fall, spring, winter equinoxes. And then the other four Sabbaths are kind of spaced halfway in between all of those. And so in this video specifically, we're going over Beltane and the summer solstice. So this is the next two sets of sabbats out of this year again the previous video i covered the first two which were in bulk and ostara which is spring equinox and again the purpose of this video was for me to just kind of learn as i go kind of researching and then finding all these cool rituals um, divination things maybe recipes or things that might me and my family can go out and go do together so that i can basically just learn and see if we can't find some new family traditions to have. So thank you guys for watching and be sure to tune into all four of the Sabbath videos that I'm going to be making. Now it is Beltane. Good morning, we have a ton of stuff planned for today. A brief overview of Beltane is basically that this is just a fertility fire festival and we are halfway in between spring and summer and this was a time that people would just like get out and throw big events outside to kind of protect their crops, protect their harvest and ask for the goddess of or gods of fertility to basically bless them for the upcoming year. And many people used it to celebrate the god Bellinus. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. Now there are so many different like rituals and cultures that believed so many different things. I really enjoyed reading about it, but there's no way I could like put it all into this video. So if you're curious, like definitely check out this book. I thoroughly enjoyed it, especially because these traditions have evolved over tons and tons of years. And now basically it's just a celebration of kind of spring, um, sex, fertility, fire, the returning of the light of the year. It was also a time to like set protection, um, especially with like mischievous fae that might have been around to like screw up your stuff. So what you can do nowadays is just like get creative, get outside. It's a little bit of that same energy of spring equinox. You can plant some plants, you can be in nature, you can use this as a time to kind of like refresh your outside, your inside, you know, move some furniture around, get like a new wardrobe together if you want. Really the energy is all about banishing the last of those winter blues. So go out, get adventurous, maybe even like have a barbecue or maybe like a picnic out in the park with some of your friends. Or if you can't necessarily do that, you know, bring the greenery, bring that kind of energy indoors. So you can decorate with a lot of plants, a lot of springtime colors, or even set it up to be kind of like a romantic setting, especially if you're focusing more on like the fertility and the relationship side of the Sabbath. Now the thing that I found most interesting about this um, Sabbath is that it kind of has more history than some of the other ones, at least the ones I've researched so far, which is three. The Romans actually celebrated it pretty heavily for a long, long time. And they have all these records of it and it used to be called um, Floralia. And they basically worshiped the goddess Flora. 
and she was the goddess of spring, fertility, she would bring the flowers back, the harvest back. But even back then, they had the flower crowns, they had the fires, they had the dancing. They also used to do a lot of like plays, um, a plays representing like the oak and the holly king, which is like the symbol of some of the time this year. Also the god and the goddess and how the god would impregnate the goddess around this time. Um, so like plays were also a huge part of Beltane, so maybe you go see an outdoor play. I would love to see like an outdoor Shakespeare play. That would be totally cool. And apparently the morning dew on Beltane morning is supposed to have magical powers and people would usually save it and like use it to like literally like attract their mate or like a new relationship. They would also spread it on their skin to like um, be more beautiful. And so I actually got moon water last night, um, brought it inside this morning because um, last night was also a Taurus full moon eclipse. But the point here is to kind of have these fun outdoor spring parties to basically wake up the earth and wake up, you know, whatever wasn't woken up from the last bit of winter. So we took some time today to plant the plants that we had planted like at was that in bulk or spring equinox. We got those actually outside and in the ground. We've since um, spring equinox also works a little bit more on our camper. That's coming along. And we've also gotten butterflies for my son. Caterpillars technically. So I'm about to make some fairy cupcakes. There are just a lot of recipes and like feasts that happen with all of these sabbats. So in that book, um, there's obviously a ton of recipes. Honestly, I think Pinterest and Instagram, I found cooler recipes. So I found this one on Pinterest. I wanted to make fairy cupcakes since we weren't gonna like do a full like meal, but I wanted to do something fun and just try out something different. Beltane is actually halfway to Samhain, which is like Halloween. Um, and that's why I keep seeing a bunch of things on my social media posts, halfway, halfway to Halloween. And I was like, oh, okay. Beltane, that's a good way to remember halfway to Halloween. Um, but apparently this is um, something that I forgot in the last vlog, but um, this is the light half of the year and that actually started at spring equinox. And so the light half of the year basically means the days are longer than the nights and the darker half of the year means that the nights are longer than the days. Um, and so that kind of switches over spring equinox. Um, so it's not technically Beltane, but I forgot it in the last one and I wanted to mention it. Um, but from now until Samhain, it's basically just going to be the light half of the year. Days are going to be longer than nights. But what I think is cool is that they also say that the veil is thin around this time, just like it is in Samhain, um, Halloween. Um, and so I'm going to use that to kind of work with the fairies tonight. And I'm really excited and I wanted to make these cupcakes as a part of it. Okay, let's try it. Let's try mommy's fairy cakes, no promises. <laughs> You want your bite? No. <laughs> you don't want your bite? No. <laughs> You're not gonna try? Here, bud. No. <laughs> he already knows it's gonna be bad. So we found a Maypole event that's pretty close to our house. We're gonna try it out and head over there. Anyone, uh, anyone who's her god comes or the night today so the maypole was traditionally erected in towns to kind of show off and say who has the biggest maypole and it's kind of a phallic symbol of masculine energy so you can celebrate by creating a small maypole or going to a maypole event you can also create flower crowns wands at these events they would crown a may king and a may queen people would also leave baskets on their neighbors homes as kind of like a sign of friendship and goodwill <laughs> That was so much fun. We just got home. I had to drop my husband off because he's doing a live stream. But we 
kind of just showed up. We had no idea what to expect. Um, and apparently that was the group that used to do the big event that literally is printed in the Beltane book. Like, what are the odds? Um, and literally I found out about that event through a Facebook group from somebody who was sharing it from a meetup. Um, so I'm so glad we did that. We had a ton of fun. Everyone was so nice. <laughs> so nice. And we were able to just jump in. We didn't really know anybody, but we had so much fun. And because of the way the Maypole was set up, everyone was running and dancing and like freaking out. <laughs> it ended up being fun and everyone was just laughing. And we had to leave really early, but I think we want to definitely do that again next year and like hang out and actually meet people. Um, but even my husband said he had a blast and he absolutely loved it, which I was very surprised about. <laughs> um, but he was totally into it. Um, our son had a blast as well, especially banging those drums. <laughs> Next year, I totally want to get the flower crowns like everyone else had. This reminds me a lot of the movie Midsummer, which is kind of confusing because Midsummer is technically Letha, which is summer solstice, the next Sabbath that's coming up. So I wonder if they got that wrong or if that was intentional, but don't go watch that movie. <laughs> it's not a good representation of it. It's like a horror movie, but it's really good. It's like one of my favorite movies. So I already had a butterfly kit, um, so I just bought a replacement butterfly, just like the caterpillars and some food. Um, got them in the mail, and so it's only day two now, but we're going to watch them grow Yay. because somebody really loves butterflies. Yeah. The first time I bought butterflies, which is when I had this kit, a certain somebody decided to go and kill them all as soon as they turned into butterflies. A bug. You see those bugs? <sighs> you trying to blow on them? This is day four. Two of them have cocooned up top. It looks like two are cocooning on the bottom. It's kind of gross. So it has been three days since these guys form chrysalises and you're not supposed to touch them yeah. or move them so they can fully harden. Oh, f you're moving. Oh, f oh, f <laughs> oh, God, that's weird. Every instinct makes me want to drop that and throw that. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then we've got, see those two in the corner? Okay. <laughs> but now we're gonna zip it up and I guess give them like a whole nother week to 10 days. Are they gonna turn into butterflies? Butterflies? Yeah. The bug's about to, I woke up so I could go film some new videos for you guys at my office. I came into my husband's room. Three of them have already hatched. The papa. Yeah. You see the butterflies? The papa. You see the papa. Oh wow. The papa. Is that the butterfly? It's the papa. And they gotta stay in here for about three days, and then we can release them. All right, you want to say night night, butterflies? <laughs> Don't grab it, just look. All right, so we got the butterflies, we're ready to let them go. I think Ash will eat them, so let's go release them up front. <laughs> yeah, you would totally eat them, Ash. All right, we gonna let them go up front. There they go. Okay, be careful, don't touch, just look. <laughs> don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. <laughs> don't touch, don't touch. <laughs> Come on, butterfly. <gasps> oh, there he goes. Look, he's up by the tree. <laughs> you see him on the tree? <laughs> yeah. He flew away. He flew over the fence. Bye. Bye. Bye, butterfly. 
I think one of the things I'm most excited to do today is work with the fairies. I'm so excited. Okay, um, so one of the things that I read in this book was that um, there was a lot of work like around the Fae, either protecting yourself from it or giving offerings to the Fae to basically ask for what you want or say, hey, please don't mess with my crops or my livestock this year. And in this book, it calls them the Sid. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but so one of the things you can do is work with the fairies. And I, as soon as I read that, I was like, all right, that's what we're doing. I have been waiting to work with the fairies, honestly, since I was a little girl. So story time, like even back when I was studying about my psychic ability and I was in the Aspen program, I would read for other people or other people would be reading each other and they would be like, oh my gosh, you totally have fairy guides around you. And I would always be so jealous. <laughs> I'd always be like, I want fairy guides. <laughs> I've always had this vision of, oh, the next house, I'm gonna make a fairy garden. But then I was like, wait, why can't I start here? I can easily pick all that stuff up and move it to the next house. We have this amazing backyard. I've been spending a lot of time in it and outside because of these Sabbath videos and I'm realizing I can start now. <laughs> it's obviously an expensive thing to get going. So I'm just starting small I grabbed a few items and I think I'm just gonna add as the year goes on so let me show you what I got I got this um, this is a great company by the way I got it through Amazon but they're called tree poetry um, it's like super not it says non-toxic eco-friendly paint weather resistant um, and it's really easy to set up so let's let me just show you guys what's inside all right, so we've got some doors and some windows and these are like glow in the dark paint, which is also super cool. I didn't want to buy a bunch of small cheap things. I wanted to buy like the things that I wanted and just build it as I go. Um, and so it also came with like this cute little hook that has a sign that says secret garden. And then I also just got this at like Michael's because it was kind of cheap and it's like broken glass. I don't think it's like real, I hope it's not real glass, but um, um, it's like tiny little glass that I can like make like a pathway or like an entryway up to a door. So I can start to shape, you know, the, the layout of the garden that I've got going on. And I also grabbed these at Michael's. Um, they're just kind of little mushrooms with like really hard stems so I can poke them into the ground. And then if you've seen the movie Hook, um, there is Tinkerbell's house. She lives in a lantern. Every time I watch that movie, I've always been like, I'm gonna make a fairy house lantern. And I realized I have been hanging on to these lanterns from our wedding. I have three of them, they're literally doing nothing. So I'm gonna take one of these eventually, not today, and sort of build a house out of it. I need to kind of come up with some ideas. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, so we really only have three trees in our yard there's that one in our front yard but i didn't want to do it in our front yard because i didn't want anyone to steal stuff that one is like way way in the front yard like on the sidewalk so definitely not going to use that one um and then we've got this one right here which is perfect because it's kind of like a secluded corner behind this bush um and i think it'll work out perfectly you want to help me make a fairy garden? Can we make a fairy garden? Where should we put the door on this tree? Now part of me doing this, I decided, okay, I probably need to do some research on working with the fairies um, and the fae because literally the only reference I've ever read was Fairies 101 by Doreen Virtue. And it, it's, it's a little flowery and pretty and it kind of just only goes over the positive stuff. No! Door, that's a fairy door. And I've realized from doing some research, I guess fairies can be something a little bit not so great to work with. Um, I would say just even though I haven't done my research, obviously I'm only going to work with things for my highest and best good. Um, so there's a lot of research out there. I am going to link the main video that I found that I really enjoyed down below, but this is going to be an, a continuing process. I'm going to be safe with it, but I didn't even realize that like the fairies that we think of, 
like the little women with like wings apparently has only been around as long as like the Victorian era. Before that they had totally different images. So I'm kind of setting the intention that those are the fairies that I'm working with. Um, as I learn I will go along and kind of modify this practice and do any sort of anything else that I need to do. But I am going to do like a little prayer that it has in this book. So it's apparently supposed to help with if you have stagnation in your life or you could use a boost of extra luck. Here's a prayer you can use for the fairies to help them out. If you like really want this, you can pause it. And this is basically what I'm gonna be saying tonight. The only problem is that my dog is out there almost every day. So I need to make things, you know, so that he can't destroy or eat. We're gonna see how that goes or pee on. <laughs> um, but we're gonna try our best. And I think for the most part, he'll stay away from it. I'll bring some more things out here when I actually come out to do the prayer, but I'm going to wait until he goes to bed because he just can't keep his hands off of it. Um, but it's so cute. Do we make a fairy house? <laughs> no, no, no. Is that where the fairies live? The fairies are going to move in? Yep. <laughs> yep. The fairies are going to move in. No, no. Yeah, they'll go through the door. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're so no, funny. No. The door, yep. Now, obviously, in these videos, I am like showing you guys everything you could. No, I'm not even showing you everything that you can do, but I'm showing you a lot. This is honestly a lot for one day, but I'm doing it for the purposes of this video. So, really, the key here is just to kind of pick one or two things that you really want to do. Maybe do those every single year and then change it up, add some other things another year. Um, but I thought, even if like you didn't want to build a whole fairy garden, you didn't want to go out and do a maypole thing, Beltane could be like just a fairy day and maybe you know you just watch a fairy movie one year if you've got a lot of plans or something and so I wanted to mention like my favorite fairy movie that's out there it's an old 90s film or is it 90s yeah 97 um it's an old 90s movie that is kind of about these two girls who find fairies in the woods obviously I would also recommend like basically any version of Peter Pan I have like all of them also Finding Neverland I feel like just kind of embodies and encompasses the the mood of believing in magic believing in fairies having optimism again honestly you know just watching this at this time of year might give you like a little bit of boost of like oh yeah I can believe in magic I can believe in my manifestations um so I think like even if you just watch a movie and that's all you do for all of Beltane. Not that you have to celebrate it at all, but I'm just saying like, I, I, I know my videos are doing like everything, but I think some years, even next year, maybe I'll only do so much. And this is also something I have as an idea. Beltane was great. <laughs> um, I, I really wouldn't change a thing. I feel like this is the first one where like, we sort of got it the first time. Um, the only downside, obviously, is like having to film during all of it. Like, I do look forward to in future years not having to like vlog during the whole entire time. Um, but that's not like too big video. I'm I'm doing this on purpose, and I think I'm also really happy with this series because I think my intention is coming through. Of like, look, you don't have to like believe in these things to necessarily take a few things here and there and just like make a fairy day like it doesn't even have to be Beltane. What I am most enjoying out of this whole entire process has been that I'm just doing so many new things that I wouldn't have done before. And again one of my purposes originally by doing this was to establish new family traditions and I feel like I have so much to go off of now. And I just hope that you guys are getting something out of it too, just maybe learning about it. Or maybe you're like, oh, hey, next year, I'm going to try doing that thing. I'm going to bring that ritual or that recipe into the house. I'm really enjoying um, having an excuse to do some like inner child work. And by inner child work, I mean like actually like doing things that children do. And I think I'm having so much more fun watching my son do it as well and remembering what it was like to be a kid and when my mom would set up like magical things like this and so this is like what I wanted to do as a parent and so I'm very excited and happy to be introducing stuff like this to him. 
this is giving me events in my life. And <laughs> I forgot how to have that after the pandemic. Like the pandemic, we were, you know, home all day, yada, yada. And once we kind of got over it, I think we forgot how to get out and do things and like plan for things and dream up what we want to do next. And I was really like stuck there for a while of just like, I, I remember telling my husband several times, like, I don't, I don't know what to hope for next because I've been in such a state of like everything shifting so don't make any firm plans you know we kind of lived in that area for a while and so I kind of had to get out of like okay you know not everything is going to be changing all the time you can plan things for the future you know this is a long rant but like I've just been thinking about it a lot in between filming and like another side effect of this has been that I've just been way I've been outside more and that's like huge and I know when I say it, it doesn't sound that exciting, but I'm just, I'm outside more. I'm also paying way more attention to the seasons than I ever was before. And I think that's so important when we are just constantly living indoors on our phones. And I, I think maybe part of it is just being outside has increased my happiness because I'm paying attention to the seasons because I'm like, oh, I got another Sabbath coming up. Like I've got to prepare. I'm watching the trees and the bushes that we have outside bloom. Whereas, you know, I wouldn't pay attention to that normally. So like, I'm really surprised of all these like side effects that this series has brought about, but I'm kind of like not surprised that just by being outdoors, <laughs> like the, all of this is coming about. So I've got a whole month and a half until the next Sabbath, but it's gonna be seconds away for you guys. <laughs>
small world. Not so small. What did mommy get? Mommy got the pineapple refresher lemonade. I wanted a summery drink. Try something new. Let's try it out. Coffee. This is the one time it's actually not coffee. That's actually really good. There's like hunks of pineapple in it. Perfect way to start. You could probably have a sip of this. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Okay, try a little sip out of that hole. Is it good? <laughs> Yummy? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> we'll go home and I'll put some in a cup, okay? So you don't get <laughs> so you don't get wet. <laughs> Say thank you. What I love about these books is that it has a whole chapter on like the old ways, like how the Sabbath might have been celebrated or how it was celebrated in the past. And then it has a whole chapter on how it's celebrated kind of like modern day. So in the past, you know, you might have already planted your plants, like you're done, you're done planting. Now it's time to wait for that harvest. The first harvest probably isn't here yet. That's gonna be the next Sabbath. But they would do a lot of bonfires, a lot of rituals to protect the crops, encourage growth, you know, ask for a good harvest. There were a lot of traditions where they would actually like burn wheels and send them down you know, like a, a hill, and the wheel is the symbol of the sun. And it's a big time to kind of celebrate the sun and fire and the growth of the season. A lot of people would pray to the gods. Um, so the sun god, Ra, Apollo, all of those gods are listed in these books. There's also a ton of sites all around the world that are like Indiana Jones style. If you go on the summer solstice, something cool happens, like a light comes in, in a certain direction and it lights it up. Uh, Stonehenge, this is the time of the year to go. So I'm definitely adding that to my bucket list. Gotta go during the summer solstice. This was also a time that people gathered their herbs for the year. So some of that was already growing, um, but mostly that's kind of it. I was surprised at kind of how sparse this book was in comparison to others. And there wasn't a whole lot of universal things going on. Like there's a lot of separation between this culture did this, this culture did that. Um, but it seems like the overall thing was celebrating the sun, the summer, but there's not as many kind of universal stuff as there was in some of the other books. Now, a lot of those older ways are kind of old and you can't do a whole lot of that, but there's still a lot of symbolic ways that you can still ce celebrate the summer solstice. You can get outside, you can work on anything that you want to grow. This is a great month actually for getting married, if that's like something you want to plan in the future. In your rituals or celebrations, focus on love, focus on the mother. This is a time when that maiden has been impregnated and she is now the mother. She'll eventually turn into the crone. Fairies are apparently easy to connect to like this whole summer. I didn't realize they're, they're easiest to connect to during um, Samhain, obviously, but and then um, it was the spring equinox, Beltane, that we had. Um, but this, basically in between, I guess is a great time to connect with them. So I'm gonna be adding some things to our little fairy uh, corner tree, um, just to kind of keep that moving along. You could also watch or read A Midsummer Night's Dream. This Shakespeare play was actually written about the exact same day, so might be a fun way to do it, especially if you're in the city and you can't bring a whole lot indoors. But if you are in the city, think about how you can bring the summer, the outdoors inside. I'm gonna be making some dried fruit um, wheels that kind of symbolize the sun, and I'm gonna hang them up as some cool, um, really good smelling decorations. You could have a picnic, you could go on a hike, you could go have like just a really good dinner with like some friends. You can even make satchels of herbs. You could just go to your local metaphysical store, get herbs from there if you don't actually grow any and kind of make like little packets. You can know, you can make one for like sleeping, for intuition, for whatever it is you're trying to manifest. You could also kind of go on a hike and look for sticks um, to make um, dowsing rods or even wands. And just kind of looking at the theme, like basically in bulk, we're prepping, we're getting ready for things. And then during the spring, it was all about kind of bubbly, new, hopeful energy. But now it's summer. Now we put those plans into action. We're go, go, going. We're do, do, doing. 
So anything along those lines you can do, honestly, like I'm kind of looking at today is just like being outdoors, doing some summery things. Um, but honestly, it has been a busy couple of weeks for us. We have my son's birthday that just happened. also have Father's Day within the same week. We have summer solstice. We also went to this dinosaur exhibit. Um, it was a lot of fun. And that group that we went and did the Maypole with, like they actually had a summer solstice celebration, but it was the same day of my son's like birthday party for family. So we didn't get to do that, but we're gonna keep an eye out to see if they have any future stuff um, coming up with the other Sabbaths. This is just a really busy time for me. So I'm trying to just kind of celebrate it over a couple weeks. We're also going to be doing a barbecue with my sister and we're going to the Renaissance Fair this week. So we have a ton of things planned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, big boy. <laughs> One thing that I noticed just between the springtime sabbats versus this summertime sabbat is how much that fertility actually happened in between these vlogs. So like we just got a whole lot of new stuff like we got a lot of house improvements. Let me show you one of the things that we have. So we qualified for this like weatherization program and they came in and just weatherized our house so they like put in all these like little things and this like storm window basically to like keep our house more insulated none of this you can really see but they also like went up into our attic they did a ton of work on our heater which will be helpful in the winter um, but they replaced like how we change our filters we used to have to climb up into our attic to change our AC filters which was such a pain in the ass but now all we have to do is replace them right here um, they also added a ton of insulation upstairs. They put CO2 monitors into our house. Like this was all free with this program and we just happened to qualify for it, which was super cool. And the biggest thing, my son is sleeping. <laughs> the biggest thing that they did that they didn't have to do was replace our water filter. So this is like our laundry room. We have a brand new water filter. It, our last one was kind of rusting and they were like, eh, that's sketchy. Let's fix it for them. And this thing costs like to have us replace it, it would have been like fifteen hundred, two two thousand dollars, somewhere like that. Completely free. They also gave us this little CO2 monitor. Another thing that happened is that we got a brand new fence. Look at that! They're building this house. And um before there was a really old house here that was like pushing the um the fence down. You can see that in the previous video. Um, but that was part of the thing is they needed to replace that because they had damaged our fence. Um, so they came in, replaced this. We technically paid half of it, but it's like brand new. <laughs> it feels like a new house in a lot of ways. Um, on top of that, we also found um, a place that did um, mulch drops. So we've always like gone and dug our own mulch up for free hauled it over to our house and like spread it around we found a company called chip drop that does it for you so you just put in your address they literally come to your house and drop off the mulch which saves a ton of work and effort um so now we have new mulch all around our house and if you've got like old mulch and old dirt like it starts to look bad and it makes your house feel crappy so like our like backyard feels completely new with all of this also, in between this Sabbat and the last Sabbat, my mom moved, and so I got a bunch of her furniture, a bunch of her clothes, so I got a whole new ton of things that I got manifested. I also manifested a whole bunch of tarot decks. I've talked about that in some of my live nights. Um, there's one week that I got like literally four new tarot decks. Two were gifted, one was kind of like a hand-me-down, somebody found it, gave it to me. And then the other one somebody bought for me. There's just like a lot of fertility and new growth. I kind of wonder 
if it might have been the fairy stuff that I did at least for the outside because like I did the fairy like prayer and then all this stuff changed in our backyard just just a thought we've also gotten some work done on our camper because it's been so warm I've been able to actually get out here and like work in here and we've made a lot more progress on this so first coat of paint I need to go back with the green but redid all of the knobs and like the cabinets it used to be blue in here and it made it look really small but I painted a lot of things white like even this they used to have blue which I thought was odd there used to be this massive cabinet here we took that out there's a wheel there so we still have to cover this and we're gonna make it kind of like Maybe another seat area cushion. This is actually where the bed goes. It'll come out to there. Um, but my husband is gonna put in new floors. We already bought the floors for it. If any of you guys have a house, and I mean, even if you don't have a house, if you have a yard, if you have an apartment, you know what it's like getting, <laughs> trying to get like any sort of house projects done. They take forever. But we have just been moving very quickly on this. Um, I'm curious to see if it'll be done by the next video. The new fence, they built it all the way back here. My dad put in this. He also made the gates. We need to just finish this little chunk right here. At the time, we didn't have enough fence pieces, but now we do. Basically, everyone will have this whole area to just like hang out and have their little Airbnb. This is the door and they'll park over there. I'm really stoked about this. It'll just be some extra income for my husband and I. And then we can also take that thing out and go camping with it ourselves. bag right here we have had since 2011 we bought it in a garage sale it has been the highlight of many drunken parties I had it before I had kids but now it is a kids toy <laughs> let's set it up today is the perfect day for it you ready for about four hours now. So these ones I just lost, they had no middles, so they're gone. All right, here are the ones that survived. Let's see what we can do with this. I think this turned out better than I expected. Let's hang it up. Not bad for a first try. I'm super happy with that. We'll have to come back and see what it looks like during the sunset. I think something just got delivered. Ooh. So I've been waiting on these for a couple weeks and it just happened to show up today. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. I love him. <laughs> so we're going to Disney in two and a half months and I have one set of ears that I got in Tokyo. I want to collect more. Um, but I wanted to shop from somebody that made them online, not like Disney themselves. So I got these ivory Sherpa ears from Park Hopper Design. I will link her in the description down below if you just happen to be a Disney Parks fan. <gasps> yes! Oh my gosh, it's so hot. Okay, my son is taking a nap, so I wanted to grab one of the divination um, things out of this book. Um, they even have like a tarot sun spread. Um, they have all sorts of divination techniques in here. Um, I'm just going to choose one and I decided to do the rune reading because I've actually got a rune video coming up. I'm going to teach you guys just the basics about the runes so you can start using them. So look out for that video soon. Um, but this is called the three rune reading. Basically, it's a summer solstice divination and it's using just three runes. And basically the first one you pull will represent the year behind you, kind of what's happened so far. And then the second is the present day. Um, I'm kind of like hearing from my guides that might be like give or take like a couple weeks, maybe even a month, like not just today. Um, and then the third will be the remainder of this year. I mean, I think that's a kind of good um, spread, especially because we're literally like halfway through the year. Um, and this is what I'm referencing off of. I have not had these memorized. I'm practicing more with the tarot right now and trying to get those memorized. Runes will be next for me. Um, but I did take a rune class. I highly recommend this book. I feel like I did a video on it. Maybe I, I, I don't think I did. Um, but I'm going to. <laughs> so these are my cute little runes. All right. What has my year been like so far? Where are we at right now? And what's the rest of the year look like? And I also love this book because she's got a quick reference right here with like the page number. So the first one that I pulled is Uru's and I can look that up on page six. Buffalo. This is kind of representing the buffalo. Horns pointed down, charging at you. Raw transformative energy, physical drive, collective will so kind of what I'm getting from this is that this is just kind of that energy of like untamed wild animals um it's raw the raw transformative energy sticks out she also puts questions down here so that you can kind of ask yourself if it doesn't make sense what's stampeding through your life um what changes require your willpower um, that to me, I guess, sort of makes sense for this previous year. I mean, I'm not fully resonating with that, but to me, I would say maybe let's read the rest of them and then maybe I'm just forgetting. I feel like I'm forgetting um, what this year has been like. I guess I have been very busy and very much trying to get a bunch of stuff done. Okay, so the next one that we have is the Naduiz. Page 14 is what that says. It kind of looks like a cross, but it's actually angled. Fire, kindling. Oh yeah, so the, it's like going like this, like you're kindling a stick. Um, kindled anew, know-how and determination, willingness to create friction. Represents not only survival, but a fresh start, regenerative change. That totally makes sense to me. I feel like I've been on the precipice this whole year of like really getting on top of some like monetary changes in my life, but also like self care changes. And I didn't realize how much those were intertwined. And I think I'm finally starting to understand, oh, if I take care of myself, if I slow down, if I prioritize me, then the money, you know, career, it just gets a lot easier. <laughs> Wish I would have learned it sooner. But um, that to me makes a whole lot of sense, especially with that being like the last month and kind of going into maybe the next couple weeks, definitely feeling like there's a fresh start coming my way for sure. Um, and then the last rune I got, this is the future or the rest of the year, and I got it's an X, but am I just not seeing it? Oh, right there. Gibo, page 11. Gifts, equal armed, balance. So yeah, you know, like when you see that, you can see how there's like balance in that symbol. Both are equal arms. An exchange of energies, reciprocal connection, 
promises re reciprocity. Honestly, to me, I'm immediately hearing from my guides, like all the effort that you've been putting in, you're finally gonna see it like come back. And I've already been seeing that a little bit. Um, I feel like this is just saying, hey, you're gonna finally reap those rewards. Um, the question's at the bottom. What are you accepting? What are you giving away? So maybe this is a reminder that I have to be thankful. I have to be grateful. I have to sit in that energy of abundance. What gifts have you received in life? Like this to me is just gratitude. And maybe feeling like the end of the year is going to be a bit more balanced. Um, especially when we go back to that first rune of it being just like crazy raw energy. I totally feel like there was a lot more inconsistencies than I was hoping for um, this beginning of this year just in like money and and things coming through there's just a lot more like hitting the wall I guess I I came across a lot more obstacles than I anticipated so that was fun I absolutely love that um that was a good indicator for the rest of the year so you can do that with a pair of runes these didn't cost me very much at all I can link them down below if you want to get started especially because I'm gonna have a new video out for you soon there's some really cool ones in here. I want to be able to get this book again. Like there's a Thor's summer storm spell. So like when a storm happens, you get out there and do it. I love that. So tonight I do have a live night. Um, it's interesting how these Sabbaths have fallen either on Sundays um, or Tuesdays. I don't know if that's usually the case. I assume um, maybe not, but um, Tuesdays um, are usually my live nights. Sundays are, you know, Sundays, but it's funny because both of them are my husband's work to work days, um, work days or like work nights. He, he does live streams on his YouTube channel. So like my husband hasn't been able to participate in any of this. Um, but I'm going to be doing this tonight in the live video. And if you want to like go back and check it out, I will link that video above. I'm also going to be doing a fire ritual tonight because, um, this whole Sabbath is about fire celebrating the light. So that is happening here pretty soon. I'm gonna see you guys all there. You, it will be in the past for you now, but um, I'm gonna get ready for that. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is so pretty. I wish I would have made more. All right, so I am about to start our live night. Um, and I've got, I read in this book about a candle and I didn't realize it's not quite for everybody, but I'm just going to kind of make it up as I go. Um, and, or I shouldn't say that as much as change it, but I've got this candle. It also required you to have some thread. So I have some thread that's kind of like a multicolored, but also like red, orange, yellow, and I braided it together. It's going to become like a bracelet, um, for your ankle or your wrist. Um, and basically I'm going to be lighting the candle and then saying these words. And basically what we're asking is for the sun's energy to come into this candle and into these ribbons. And then basically as we wear these ribbons, we take that energy with us. So I'm going to do that now before the live starts, but I'm also going to be setting the intention that any energy that I'm bringing in, I'm also giving out to anybody that needs it, that they are also energized by today's fire, sun, and light. All right, and then the group reading tonight, I'm gonna use this tarot sun spread that is also in this book. All right, here are those cards pulled right before the reading and we're gonna get into it. If you wanna know what it is, you can go back and watch it. Hey everyone, happy Lisa, happy summer solstice, happy midsummer. I'm very excited for tonight's video. Hey everyone! Alright, this candle is out. Now I will go ahead and wear this bracelet and keep the energy of the sun with me for the next couple of days. Woohoo! Just ended the live night. It is 8.30. And I'm pretty sure I finished it just in time to see a little bit of a pretty sunset. Let's see. It's weird to have done my live night and it still be light out. I can definitely tell a difference. So we got the sunset going on behind us. It was a fun day. Um, and I think as far as like what I would do different, I don't think I'd do a whole lot differently. 
this is a busy time of the year. I think all summer solstice I will celebrate over kind of the whole summer. And I think summer is about celebrating being out and about. And I think if you can spread it out and do a little bit of it during the season, I think it just makes it less stressful. Um, also, summer solstice is always gonna fall within the same week as my son's birthday and Father's Day. So it, this one is unfortunately always gonna be crazy for me. Honestly, if I had a sangria right now and I could sit on the porch and watch the sunset, that would be perfect. Maybe I need to make it a sangria kind of night every single year. <laughs> So thank you all for watching this next Sabbath vlog. I will see you for the next two Sabbaths, um, which will be Lugan's Jaw, I do not know how to say that one, and the Autumn Equinox. So see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.